Hey Max, how are you doing? Hey, ciao Crix. Everything is perfect. I was swimming in Trieste. You know Trieste, I think, as a town. Well, I so don't I know. I never been there. Since, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was swimming till five minutes ago, so my my hair is still wet. And but you know, I had to participate to metal pizza because when I when I saw this. Uh, uh, a new program launched in uh, Instagram, Facebook, and everything. I said, what the hell? What is that? And then I see you, and uh, I saw that you uh, made interviews to the uh, Damna, the, the, the vocalist of uh, Elden King, uh, Hell in the Club. Then last week you had also uh, Jonathan, yes. another friend of mine. So I Hey, Crix, I have to participate. I have yeah. to tell you something also <laughs> about myself. <laughs> yeah. Also, also I can feel. Yeah. Also because uh, I start to work with music things uh, thanks yeah. to you. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah, because I... <laughs> I remember that uh, I was following the rock on and listening to you and then I suggest you a uh, few bands and then you were oh, I don't have those songs so I had the CDs so you were like come to the radio and uh, let's let's have those CDs and put something and yeah, from one, actually... one time it become that every Tuesday I was there with you. I was doing the Facebook things for from April yeah. to beginning of October before I moved to Finland. So yeah, absolutely, I remember well because you know uh, me, uh, I am Max with double X, and Andrea, and Mr. Rock, my boss, uh, decided to do this program long ago. Actually, he started the program, but then he called me for a short interview, and then I started to talk, and I, I stayed there an hour and a half. I think we, I have to introduce my first concert of Camelot in GS, if I remember well. And so Andrea told me, hey, Max, do you want to come back the next? Uh, that time it was on Friday. Now we are broadcasting the program uh, on Wednesday, but also on TV right now. So... Um, every time we are we are um, broadcasting uh, material stuff audio and now also video that we actually bought we never download illegally you know the music uh, so that time we need if you want to to promote a band we need the originals the the cassette the album everything uh, so we invited you there and actually your um, your work, your job was excellent during these days, those days, because you remember we had a lot of listeners all spread yeah. all over the world, and uh, presently the, um, your your job is still vacancy. You know we need a secretary. <laughs> so if someone in Trieste wants to, <laughs> uh, it's a mess. You know we we cannot reply to all the messages then. TV and the radio and the music. Sometimes we also are doing interviews. Yeah. Uh, so we, need, we, we, you miss us a lot, a lot. <laughs> so whenever you come back to Trias, you will be more than welcome in our radio program. You know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's life in Finland? Is uh, warm like 30 degrees like here uh, in Trias? Well, today is warm, but not 30 degrees. It. 23 ah. de degrees today, <laughs> so it's warm. It's surprisingly Very warm. Yes. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah. But, so uh, let, me, let me understand what you are talking uh, Are you talking about during your program? What I'm pizza talking and... about? About metal yeah. music, pizza, and everything in between. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, right. it's a pizza. It's a big mess with everything let's put all the ingredients on the pizza <laughs> ah got it okay because i i was very curious i saw what meta okay i love pizza come on i'm italian maybe the spaghetti was better but all right let's talk about it <laughs> <laughs> well you can think about but a program called the metal spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> 
No, maybe it's one of the worst albums made by Guns N' Roses, the Spaghetti Incident, so I don't want to be related. To yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's keep a rock on. Uh, you know, because we, we gifted this T-shirt to a lot of bands during our, you know, we were touring the festival during this, those, I think, 10 years, 15 years. Even if my career started long ago, in 2006, uh, I remember that Saturday, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, Max, what are we are doing Saturday evening? And actually, my reply was something like, let's go to a pizzeria, have a pizza and a few beers. And meanwhile, he told me, no, 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 we have to move to Oslo. What? Oslo where? Norway. Why? It's so far. Come on. And this, this was the, the first year, the early years, when uh, the low-cost flight came over, you know. So we were able to fly from Venice, that is a bit close to my hometown, Trieste, uh, to Oslo for something like 30 euros. Super cheap. So we went there. Yes, it was very, very cheap. Very, we didn't know that, but it was great moments, you know. It's the same time, the same moment I, I lived in the 80s when I, I was buying all the albums of Metallica, ACDC, Iron Maiden. And we didn't know that these were the golden ages. But of course, I was there, so I still remember very well. And uh, so we moved to Oslo because uh, there was a concert of Camelot, who became one of my favorite bands, um, recording a DVD. And we were really, really drunk. We we were with a white T-shirt in front, in the middle of uh, thousands of black metallers, you know, <laughs> Scandinavian. And so during the DVD recordings, it was very easy to catch up with uh, those six, seven Italians because we were big, you know, we are rugby player and white. So, and it was our very first experience. Uh, somehow we decided, hey, let's travel again. This is unbelievable. You know, you can visit the town, different worlds, different culture. And, uh, of course, it's a bit expensive, especially the beers up there, you know, better than me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we had the time of our life. And then we become friends also with Camelot. We were invited at uh, the backstage, you know, because we were singing also some songs in Italia. Siamo venuti da Trieste per vedere Camelot, Camelot. <laughs> and so Thomas Youngblood, since since uh, yes, yesterday, he told me, hey, Max, can you sing for me again that, that song? So this was our beginning. And then I just printed out my... Excel file because uh, you know I'm getting older, so I cannot remember everything. Because nowadays I have more than a thousand concerts. Uh, so Camelot have uh, been seen by me and my friends 35 times. It's a wow. big number, you know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I was beginning, and then of course I was affected uh, of COVID. These two, two, three years. I don't remember how many years passed that we couldn't fly anymore, we couldn't join any festival anymore. Uh, so we suffer a lot. For us, it was yeah. uh, the big, tragic, uh, like a World War III, you know, it was a mess. So now I'm starting again to... Step by to step. Travel. Yeah, especially in the north, because I love the culture, uh, especially in Scandinavia, uh, because I saw that a lot of uh, new generations, so young people, uh, are still listening to metal, are still uh, forming bands, also good quality bands. Anyway, here in Italy, you know, we are a bit uh, fighting. Maybe, maybe the, the, the young teenagers now, again, are starting to play rock and roll with bands, finally, and leaving their computer, you know. I don't know in Finland, I mean, in Italy, they are hand down and they have they, their life inside this well uh, it's uh, it's quite normal <laughs> for the the, the young generation to just use the this and stay all the time and just watching a tiktok and uh, dreaming to become an influencer ah, i don't understand yeah. but yeah 
this fake fake uh, parallel life, let's say. Yeah, yeah. I will remember. Uh, so in 2006, as I told you, we we went there. Uh, we discovered the new world. We started also to go to Sweden Rock uh, Festival every year because we appreciated the the, the organization. You know, fun come first. So not the money. So I, I don't like to go anymore to Italy to see big, big festivals because the, the organization is crap. And I told to a friend of mine, uh, I, I will go to the festival and to the concert I am organizing because, you know, <laughs> after those uh, festivals, I decided, hey, come on, can we do this in Italy? We have good wine, we have good beers, we have good food. Uh, we can find also good places. Maybe not so big theater, unfortunately, but let's do it uh, because I discovered a lot of, of bands from Scandinavia, young young bands. You know, I, I, I would like to move them to Italy. Uh, I will remember last year when I introduced uh, a, a band from here called The Shameless. Okay. I really, really push you to to know them. Uh, later on, I will give you also the contact of the vocalist Alice. Alice, because she, she also is able to, to talk in uh, in English, so you can invite her one of yeah, the next. Yeah, it will be nice. She will tell she will tell you more than me. You know, I'm getting older, so she's the young generation. She <laughs> she sings so well, and, and they are playing uh, their own music, and doing a few few cover during a concert that I organized. And they played uh, the theater cover, so I was astonished. I said, what? Rush? They, they, they are doing medley of Rush. They tool. I said, what? You, you know tool? Come on. And then uh, the music also is extraordinary for me. And so I was introducing them uh, to the next concert. You know, I, I'm, I, I love to organize concert, but also to jump on, on the stage to, to say something stupid at the beginning and to introduce yeah. uh, this band. And I say, finally, I found out some teenagers that are not with their head in a, in a computer or a mobile, but they are head up and they are <laughs> playing metal. Can you believe that? <laughs> and, they, and they did a great concert. And nowadays I organize already, I think I saw them 15 times in a year. Uh, so they are very, very active. I, 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 I really wish they can produce their new and first album um, within this year because I think they are the future. Yeah. Uh, mainly from Italy, you know, because yeah. we, we yeah. during these 20 years uh, activities, uh, we organize a lot of concerts, especially with, uh, you know, Camelot, Amaranth, um, Heat, uh, then we had Quiet Boys. We had uh, I don't remember a lot, a lot of. Uh, 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 then the, there was the. Uh, they are in my mind. The Norwegian band, Circus, Circus Maximus. Maximus. Yeah, before yeah. I I went, I went away from Trieste. It was the the last gig in Trieste. Ooh, you remember that? It was with DGM, a band from yeah. Rome, because I love progressive music. Uh, and Blue Rose indeed. was okay yes. for them, yeah. Right. But, you know, uh, after that, we we did also other concerts, but the venue here in Trieste, we had like five places where to to organize concerts, and now we have maybe one remained. Or oh, if you, we are doing some big concert, and the people here is forced to be seated. So I said, no way. Yeah, it's not a good way for metal music. <laughs> you have to drink, you have to hug people, you have to dance, you have to do a lot of stupid things. You cannot be seated, come on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, everything started, you know, it, it also is a funny story, because me uh, my my brother Manuel, the younger, uh, we moved to München, Bavaria, in Germany, to go to Oktoberfest. You know, we are beer drinker. And uh, we discovered that Mike Champ, the, the vocalist of White Lion, was touring in Germany be, because of uh, his solo career. You know, White Lion were already disbanded. 
I think uh, I'm, I'm talking about 2006, 2005, so long ago. So we were drinking during the morning and the afternoon at the autographers a lot of beers. And then we moved in the evening to small clubs in München, in uh, Ingolstadt, uh, other small villages around München. And I think Mike played in front of a thousand, uh, sorry, 100, 150 people. And then those two Italians, me and my brother, were doing the, the other 200 or 300. We were screaming, shouting, singing, Mike, Mike, <laughs> you, know, you know the Italian way. And so we become friends of them. Uh, and Mike left me his email that time. And after a, a few months, when I was coming back in, in Italy, uh, when I was drunk, I said, hey, you have to come to my hometown. I, uh, you have to play in Trieste, you know, because Wild Island was one of my favorite bands uh, in the 80s, you know. I was related to all the, the bands coming from the Sunset Strip, Guns N' Roses, Extreme, Mr. Big, also the other part of America, especially while I are from New York. And uh, so he wrote me an email and say, hey, Massimo, um, we're playing in Bologna and Milano won't be possible, so we are coming to Trieste. And I said, okay, um, so what do we have to do? Actually, I didn't know anything, you know, how to organize a concert. So it was really funny because we had to arrange, you know, cables for microphone. How many meters of cable? I don't, I don't have any idea, idea. Monitors. What are monitors for what? Amplifiers? Ah, yes, I think as a marshal, like Manowar, or... So <laughs> it was a mess to organize that. And then, of course, we spent a lot of money. And uh, the day before, we went to, with a minivan to pick up Mike in Bologna, that it is around three hours traveling from Bologna to Trieste. And uh, we were drunk. We were really exci excited because we saw this concert singing all the Wild Lion song again it was amazing. So we came in Trieste with no energies at all. And um, we, we did it uh, in an Italian way. We stopped all the, all the band in a restaurant, fish restaurant. We stayed there from 2 o'clock p.m. till 6, I think. And then people from the theater phoned me, hey, Max, this, people is queuing outside uh, the theater waiting for you. Uh, we were still drinking grappa, you know, on <laughs> the bed, and some of them also were a bit drunk. And I say, um, "All right, please uh, do uh, tell the people in the street that we are doing, we are, we are having some problems with the sound check." They were, we were so far from doing the sound checking, and actually, me and my brother, we, we put the money to organize this concert, and calling a few bands from Trieste, helping us also. You know, to, to build uh, the drum kit, we didn't know anything. So they gave us a big, big hand, uh, big help. And we didn't know, we knew that we are spending a lot of money, all right. But we didn't know how, my, how many people can come, you know. And this was actually the first big, big concert after Nirvana played in the same theater. In was it in the Muja? Muja, right, in Teatro Verde. I think it was 1991. We, the, the, that year was 2006, as I told you, was my great year, the, the bigger moment of my life. And uh, so we, we did sound check very easily. The theater was nice. They were absolutely great playing music, musicians, so they set up everything in very few minutes. And, and, and then I opened the door. I, look, I still have shivers here. Because I opened the doors and I, I can't I can't believe it was like uh, for 400, 500 people. You know, we never saw so many people in Trieste watching a concert, you know, metal concert. And so I, I started to shake hands to everybody. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, a friend of mine, it was a long time I didn't see you. Yes, this concert. So I discovered people came from Hungary, from uh, Austria, from Germany. So we did some big thing, you know, without yeah. knowing that. <laughs> and after that, they I received a lot of um, also uh, reviews uh, of a magazine journalists. So it was really really funny. Uh, at the end, 
we save money, let's say, we we spend the same amount we gain. So I was happy because, of course, my parents were listening to Julio Iglesias and Celentano. They say, what is chaos? What is this sound? Why are you spending our money for this long-ass man and everything with tattoos, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, it was a success. So we say, all right, let's do it again and again and again. So uh, I started to be a promoter. I still am, I am a promoter, but the Italian way. So you sit down in a restaurant, we talk about uh, all the technicians and the problems and blah, blah, blah. Then please, if you come to Trieste, take the day off the day after because you have to relax. We have to party after the, the concert. I still have great memories of uh, Heat, you know, the Swedish band. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was laughing a lot because uh, uh, two, three years ago, uh, 2020, I went to the metal cruise, rock, uh, most of rock cruise in Miami. Then we went to Bahamas, Mexico, blah, blah, blah. There were Tesla's daughter, all my favorite bands of the 80s, you know. And there was an interview to Heat because Heat were also invited to, to this boat, this cruise. And uh, some, I think, English or, or from Australia, journalists asked them, which is uh, your favorite trip um, date of your career? And they told something like uh, London, uh, I don't remember if it was Madrid, and Trieste. I said, Trieste, what? Yes, it's a long time in Trieste. <laughs> and then actually, I was there, down, you know, lo looking at them, and, and they say, yes, Max is there. <laughs> <laughs> At great times because we did also an after show party, but you know, we were dancing the tables of a pub. They actually they are not doing uh, parties, but it was like two o'clock in the night on Thursday, so they they went to close the pub. And I said, No, no, I need it for a couple of hours. And please, can I have the, also the, the audio and the, the stereo? Because we are putting our music, not anymore the normal music. So Andrea, Mr. Rock, the boss of this program, went there and put the, the right music, you know. So we were dancing the tables with Bon Jovi, Heat, Quiet Boys, uh, House of Lords, all this stuff. It was yeah. really, really a big party. So... Uh, to make it short, but I told you, we were talking, we will talk, I think, two hours, three hours, yeah. if I have to tell you everything <laughs> in details. <laughs> so I think this is uh, uh, unbelievable. It's uh, so funny uh, because you met people from uh, other countries, other religion, other social, um, I don't know, uh, you know, poor people, rich people, everything. But this music, uh, this passion we have uh, is uh, something unbelievable. It's still living, still running in our blood, in our vein. It will never stop. Yeah. I was feeding up to my wife and to my son, my kids. Our kids now, they are 25 and 30 years old. And, and I told them, you know, I have some tattoo here that's 50. I, I made already. Yeah. I'm older, you know. <laughs> I'm over 50 now. I did a big party for my uh, uh, celebration, and I told them, hey, still, uh, I think, 40, 50 years, and then I will stop. You give me 50 years more, because I still have to do a lot of concerts here in Trieste, yeah. if I can. So far, if how many how many concerts uh, did, you, did you organize? Uh, okay, I printed out... Um, at least, but actually, I don't know. I think it's something like uh, like 30, 40, which, yes, is rock. And now I became also president of another small association, and we are doing the rock camp. It is yeah. a festival. Uh, you are invited to come the next year. Yeah, I hope that I can come when... Uh, because this yeah. year it was in May, and I came in Trieste uh, at the end of July. So, yeah, <laughs> there was nothing you know, for me in Trieste at that time <laughs> as music. Yeah, Joel, maybe 
there are some bike festival or something else because of course I'm helping other associations to organize. I, I told them, hey, I, I met a few bands, I saw, because, you know, you can love music, you can uh, appreciate albums, but I think that the real value of a band is watching them live. Uh, because live, you, you can see exactly the value. Yeah. Uh, a few bands on the album are mm, so la la. But like, then live, man. they are amazing. Yeah, live, they are Kicking your ass is incredible, you know. Yeah. So uh, I still want to bring a few bands uh, here in the south. Um, and I, ho I really hope that we can. I still have a few bands that I need. And also, I'm, I'm open mind. So if you tell me, Max, I remember you were talking about Stamina of 10 years yeah. ago, 20 years ago. <laughs> so whenever you find out any band, great band there, up there, just tell me, you know, because... I'm well, so there, are, there are quite a lot that I can suggest. Uh, I, w I will Please. send you a some names you can check out and see if it's something that you think that may work there, because I don't live there. I don't know what people want. I know what year works, but what yeah. works here maybe is different from wor what works there. So yeah, of course. We, we we are talking about you know big big concert we we had uh, with the Solda show, like Paul Gilbert, uh, Richie Cothen we did uh, it was like uh, five hundred people. Also Camelot we did the Solda show in Teatro Miela. Uh, we sold uh, 40, uh, 480 tickets, so it's less than ten. 500 tickets, you know, but yeah. the situation, the reality right now is this one. We cannot pretend more. Yeah, of course, if I'm I'm doing Metallica and Iron Maiden in the big square here in Piazza Unita, I can also have more than 10,000, but uh, for the, the, the rest, you know, in a small theater, we have some sort of opportunity, but come on, we are doing it. Yeah. The, the, the money I'm, I'm in, in my regular life, I'm spending the double for my passion, music. So who cares? I'm yeah. not buying medicine. I'm buying music, you know. <laughs> music is medicine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so there is no And especially no concerts. Yeah. Also, you know, save the date. Next year, we would like to do also the, um, will be the fifth rock camp. Can you believe that? Yeah. Uh, it would be three days, or better, nights, uh, more than 40 bands. And I, like, I, like, I love to have a few bands from Trieste, of course, uh, some new bands. So like, like the teenagers I told you before, the, the, the Shameless band, this new sensation. And then, of course, I want also to, to invite uh, bands from all over Italy, uh, North Italy, South Italy, uh, DGM, for example, will be out with a new album next year. Okay, so that's I'm good to know. To, uh, yeah, this year also I was uh, engaging uh, Elvin King, but then they, they, they received a call from a festival in Germany. I told them, yeah, guys, go to Germany. You get more money and, of course, we'll be more well organized than me, you know, because... We are not so much people. We can give you 100%, but maybe won't be enough related to the, the real festivals. Uh, so we have people from Croatia, Slovenia, Austria. And of course, I, I love to have uh, also bands from the north. But of course, the main problem is money. You know, we don't yeah. have money. So we can't uh, <laughs> offer a big cachet, a bad band fee to anybody. By the way, we had a lot of fun, funny time, and uh, no sleep for three di days, three nights. <laughs> a uh, lot of beer go going on for three days or more. <laughs> yes, bands are super satisfied about our treatment. They have great food, great hospitality, and people is coming here. Everybody is very happy. So it's like, uh, you know, carnival for three days, and everybody, I, I see a lot of hang happy people yeah and it gave a lot of satisfaction you know because i think if i could be rich i surely uh, spread the money to or better i'm organizing big concerts because i think that happiness is um, uh, also more uh, 
valuable if uh, you can uh, share the same moment with your friends, also or with other people. So my happiness is to see hundred people or thousand people happy because something I did, you know. Yeah. Uh, I really hope to to do to do this interview in uh, twenty thirty years to tell you the same story. Yeah. <laughs> because it, let, let's see it what like, what time will bring yet. <laughs> It, it because, means because that we, are still, we are still have money, we still have passion, we still have bands playing, performing, so it's nice. Yeah. You know, cool. now my, my email is full of uh, applications. A lot of uh, people want to, to play, to participate. So it's unbelievable. It's a big, big movement, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you don't give the possibility to people to show up, it's impossible for them. Also in a small town like Trieste, they don't have any, any chance to do it. You know, I saw also you interviewed Cecilia from uh, Synergy, yeah. right? Right. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, finally, we, we did a big, big concert in Piazza Verdi. There's a, 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 a square, a piazza very close to the main square we have, Piazza Vita, uh, because they have the CD launch party. They, they knew album was unbelievable. Yeah, I it's really it. good. I suggest yeah. everyone to listen to it. Yeah, actually, I told Cecilia and the rest of the bands, for, for my opinion, this is uh, the first time that an Italian band is uh, on the same, uh, you can see my CDs over there, in the same uh, position of the international bands, because you, you really are an international band right now. And we were so happy because uh, they play in front of, uh, I think, I don't know if, she told you something, but I think that there were more than a thousand five hundred people in Trieste. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's a, it was a big, big success. It was a yeah. big, big part, big Great. night. Yes, so you know, this means that we can do it. Yeah, we can. It's important. Mm -hmm. So, Max, how did you get into metal music? <laughs> This is another funny story because uh, me and uh, my twin brother, uh, Metaldo, uh, we were teenagers and we, you know, first album we bought vinyl, you know, we didn't have any, any CD that time, there wasn't a Facebook, uh, it was uh, anything very easy now to listen to music, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, actually, we, the first album we bought were Genesis, Bob Marley, uh, Maybe an Italian band, I don't remember well. Uh, Deep Purple Live or so something. So we were a bit confused. We didn't know the, the right direction to, to go through. And uh, there, were an, there was an advertisement on a record shop on a street we, we used to go every day because we went to school by foot, not by yeah. SUV with my, <laughs> No, we were walking a lot of kilometers that, that time. Walking exactly, so we passed through this, and there was there was this uh, flyer, this um, poster with uh, Eddie, we discovered it was called Eddie with the aches and blood written by her maiden. You know, they were promoting their uh, concert in Galicia, in 1981, but we didn't know, you know, the band. We didn't know anything about heavy metal. Uh, we, even if we are. Uh, you know, I'm from 1968, like uh, Black Sabbath, but actually I didn't know that heavy metal exists. And so we, we ran uh, inside this uh, record shop and we asked the owner, hey, what is, the, is the band an album cover? What, is, what, is, what is, that does it mean? I didn't know anything at all because I, I still remember he said Iran, you know, like uh, Afghanistan, Iran, yeah. Iran. Biden. And uh, all right, can we have a look or just listen to a few songs? It, those times was it was impossible, you know. No, get it or leave it. So of course we didn't have so much money, but me and my brother we decided to buy. It. The album was named Killers. It was one of the masterpieces of Iron Maiden, and so we put this on our uh, vinyl recorder. And the first listen, as I still remember, was like, you know, what the hell we bought? Is this music? It's a mess, you know, it was a, it was a mess. It was a bit, sounds so, a lot of everything, drum, 
uh, guitars, loud, ever. We, 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 are, we were not used to, you know? Uh, and then he entered in our soul, in our mind, in our blood, and, and we, we get mad. Uh, we decided to, to, to follow up also the other bands. We, we started to, to see uh, MTV at Vangus Ball, something that we are starting to do right now in our radio program because we became a TV as well. So, you know, video collectors, video of four or five minutes, some interviews, some uh, live reviews as well, some live recording. So it was very hard for us because uh, we have to connect at two o'clock in the night to see 45 minutes and to know the, the bands. So I, I well remember when we saw uh, Guns N' Roses, for example, in the 88, uh, playing at uh, some, some uh, club in Los Angeles and then we fell in love with uh, Doc and Motley Crue, all these bands, you know, we started to buy a lot of the albums together with other friends and uh, we, we became really metal maniacs. <laughs> so we decided also to, to, to go to Milan uh, my first concert I, I, is written here, it was Milan, 1986, Dokken and Axel. Then we decided also to go to, to see Motorrad in Algorizia with Oslo. Then we, we had a car because finally we got our um, uh, license, driver drive license. And we remember because the car was a second hand car, a small one and uh, cost something like $500. And then the stereo we had inside was $600. So it cost more the stereo than the car <laughs> itself. And then we covered all the windows with the, the, the you know, Metallica writings, the labels. We did it, you know, cutting the scissors and everything. So we had Iron Maiden, Metallica, Accept, Halloween, with the pumpkin, you know, <laughs> it was the metal car. We decided to go also to Germany to see our first concert. And it was also another funny story because we didn't know how to communicate in English. We had very scholastic English. Uh, German, we didn't know anything except order a beer, eine große Bier, danke schön, bitte schön, blah, blah. <laughs> And so, you know, we moved in uh, me, uh, Metaldo, and my cousin from Milan. Uh, our uh, three of us uh, uh, driving this car and having just beers, 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 and two t shirts. That's all. So they stopped at the borders and they asked us, Where are you going, guys? Uh, to a concert. All right, to which concert? Madonna, uh, so Simple Mind. Uh, no, no, Agent Steel, Atomcraft, and <laughs> I don't remember, Nuclear Assault, the other band. They say, are you kidding us? We never heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> so they ask it, where are they playing? And I don't know. We, we will look for, you know, Munchen, it can't be so big. Anyway, it was so big. <laughs> so we went to a record shop called WOM that time. It was a paradise because they had a, a big, big uh, a room just for metal with a lot of vinyls and also headphones. So you can listen to, to music. For us, it was uh, discovering America for the first time, like uh, Cristoforo Colombo, you know? Yeah. And uh, we felt in love with this place. And we asked, them, where is this place? We didn't have Google Map come out, it's very easy now. So we follow up a few roads and we, we, we found out uh, an old uh, factory and, and then there was a bus stopping there and there was a long air. And then, then in, after a few years we discovered it was Danny Lilker, the bus player, also Antrax and other, play, other bands. And we, we told him, hey, are you listening to heavy metal? Uh, yes, actually, I, I am playing tonight. Ah, so this is the right place to concert? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we didn't have the photos, we didn't know the, the, the bands. You just had, you know, the registration on a cassette. You, it was really, really funny times. And we, this was also our first time we saw uh, space diving. You know, we went in this small factory, it was a small stage, 
a lot of chaos. I think blah, 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 trash metal. You know, we 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 we, we love trash metal, but that time was everything was crap. And then this punk guy with a high <laughs> hairs, he jumped over us, you know, and, and we didn't know how to do it. So we just removed, and he was crashing down the ground. <laughs> Poor guy. Because of us, we, we never saw that. Anyway, after that, we discovered also this funny uh, situation of a metal concert. Also, the body surfing, you know. It was also very nice because uh, my first stage diving was with Testament in uh, Lillehammer, so in Norway, in the middle of the forest, and I was already 40. When, it, when I was a kid, I said, if you tell me uh, your dad is 40, I, I think he's, he's a very old guy, walking, you know, like an old man. Anyway, at 40 years old, I started, I'm so proud, when Chuck Billy told me, don't be shy, come over the wall, I jump on stage, <laughs> and I, I dive into this. The people, good for me, was a lot of Scandinavian, so... Big man, very strong, you know, <laughs> muscles. Was removing, and uh, they, 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 they could also afford it, even if I'm um, a bit heavy, you know. And so I, I I'm still, uh, I think, uh, I'm coming back to my teenager time right now. So, whenever they ask me how, how old are you, I, I told them I'm 14, 15 years old maybe, because uh, I'm. So when I'm listening to music, I'm singing, I'm crying sometimes, I'm shouting, it's a mess, you know. So uh, I'm not a, a responsible dad, uh, <laughs> old guy, you know. I'm still a metal kid, a metal-related yeah, kid. But it's important to keep, uh, to keep uh, the kid part alive. It's really important. Otherwise, you are going to die sad. No, no, right, right, right. right. You're right. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm happy because our younger brother, Manuel, you know Manuel. Yeah, I know. Wise, uh, also, his um, big motto is uh, enthusiasm. Every yeah. time, let's scream, let's shout. So whenever we, we, we do the party, me and my brothers, it's every time very funny moments. And uh, every time is related to music. Every yeah, time. yeah. You cannot stop rock and roll, come on. Never, you never. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so far from all the gigs that you have seen, which one uh, is the best and why? Uh, uh, difficult is, uh, question. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm impossible to, to reply. I think the fir very first concept, of course, staying in your, in, in your life forever. Uh, but, you know, when I started to organize, so when I, I, I did Camelot in uh, Teatro Miel and Trieste, for me, it was one of my high points, you know. It, as I told you, was an unbelievable concert. Maybe wasn't so big concert, um, I don't know, but for me, it was I was crying, jumping and singing and hugging people from the beginning to the end of the concert, so it's uh, um, unforgettable, you know. Yeah. And for sure, Metallica in 1989. I saw, ah, yeah, this is another funny story, <laughs> if you have time. I had short hairs, you know, at school. You remember in the Italia, you couldn't have yeah. tattoos. Also, the tattoos were stopping here, so you couldn't see, you know. It was, you see my biking, it, it was covered. So I was going to the school without, anybody couldn't uh, realize that they have tattoos. Also in my job. Uh, office, I couldn't have the tattoos those, those times because uh, it means that you are going to jail the day after. You know, you are drug addicted. Come on, I am addicted to metal. I don't need drugs. And so <laughs> I, I went to to, to Metallica. Uh, it was uh, the Justice for All tour, and I had the Polaroid. So you know, the, you did the photo, and yeah. then after a while, it's coming out, out. And a, a very bad photo. I'm still. Even today, I, I can make good photos. Also for the festival, friends of mine are uh, every time joking and kidding about me and my capacity of doing photos, you know, I'm jumping, so I'm doing a lot of things. So I came back to Trieste. The concert was unbelievable, of course. 
And I went to my mom and I said, Mom, look at this guy. It was James Sheffield, long ass, blonde, long ass. And I say, tomorrow, please, I would like to go to uh, your hairdresser, Palquiera, you know, to the ladies' salon, and I would like to become like him. So I need to have long, long hairs. <laughs> <laughs> So I went there, they put me all the plastic on top of my head, I say, with a helmet, three hours, it was extremely hot, it was a mess. <laughs> and then the result was a bit uh, confusing, it wasn't like him. And so the day after I went to my school and the teacher were asking, hey, you get the electricity, uh, you got the shock. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a funny story. Yeah. So Metallica, and uh, well, I remember also when I finished my military service, that time was in the 90s, it was uh, 6 December 1990. And after two years of uh, military service, my mom was waiting for me to come back at, at home, you know. It was the 5th of December. Instead of moving to the east, so to Trieste, I moved to the west because there were wings like performing with uh, Pamela Anderson, Sweet Sister Mary. Uh, so also things like, it was an unbelievable concert. Operation Minecraft was one of the big, yeah. big uh, masterpieces of uh, last century, you know. And Guns N' Roses in Turin, they, they play together with the Sun Garden and Fame and War. I, I, can, I cannot uh, for, uh, forget these moments, you know. Of course, as I told you, the concert I did stay in my heart forever. But, but it's a different did, thing. Yeah, Camelot, when we went to, to Oslo to do this DVD, was uh, unbelievable funny. You know, then when I see the DVD, I said, oh, God, I invite <laughs> you. We are also on the extras. If you okay. have the possibility to see the YouTube, check it out. I have to we check are it. Also <laughs> Yes, <laughs> this song uh, we are singing in Italian, like in the stadium, you know. Um, so, kind of for sure, then White Lion, My Tramp, of course, uh, Iron Maiden, you know, Iron Maiden and Metallica are on top. Yeah. You, you, you put them together with other bands because they are out of the world. Then, yeah, I remember another story. Uh, me and Manuel moved to Stockholm to see Europe playing in Nalen festival, they did an acoustic, semi-acoustic show with uh, some strings, you know, they had a smaller orchestra from Sweden, but we didn't have the tickets. So they say, come on, we know Seven Wonder, you know, the rock band from Stockholm. Yeah. We, will, we are going there to Johan house, to Andreas house, we will party with them, and the day after we are going to the theater. So they can bring us also to this theater. In the afternoon, we came back for, for having some tickets. Uh, so we were uh, knocking at the door, like two o'clock in the afternoon. The concert was like eight or nine in the evening. And uh, I thought, like, what do you want? Uh, do you have tickets? Come on, we move from Italy. And they told her, ah, you are coming with the, the private flight because the Europe fan club made the, a charter with 50 girls, 50, 50, yeah. coming with a charter, special charter, you know. So, what do you want? Uh, right, tickets. You know, you know, there will be people from Japan, Australia, Brazil, Argentina. So, why you, you didn't buy the, the tickets as all the normal people? So, we were begging, you know, like, please, please, <laughs> let us see. Till the, the, the beginning of the concert, and, and you know better than us, in, in Scandinavia, everybody's queuing two, 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 two. They are very ordinated people, and so it's not messy like in Italy, you know. <laughs> so everyone, every couple knew our story because Mamre was crying. We don't have the tickets. We don't have the tickets. How we can do it? We cannot come back in Italy without seeing this concert. So to make it short, at the end, the... the Tour manager of Europe came out and said, Hey, how are the Italians? Yes. Okay, guys, please stop to do this theater because uh, we have hundreds of people asking, Hey, can, can you do, do this, guys? And so we did it. We succeeded. It was one of, also another unbelievable person because it was so emotional. Joy Tempest uh, singing in such a great place. 
It's also funny because they were recording the DVD, but you can see my, my brother Manuel jumping in the photo pit. I, I don't know why he couldn't go there. And so the first two songs, if you want also to check it out at uh, Europe Live at Nalen, you, you will see Manuel jumping. He was a photographer officially, but he couldn't make any photo because he was jumping and saying, hey, it's <laughs> Yeah, it's a mess, it's a mess. Then, of course, Tesla. Tesla, um, it's also, I promise to all friends of mine here in Trieste, then before I'm going to die, I need to bring Tesla to Italy, to Trieste, because they are number one. But unfortunately, they, they, they are so, um, they're doing a lot of concerts in the US, they're getting a lot of money there, they are still uh, having a uh, venue fully packed, sold out show in a big arena, you know. So I don't know if they, 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 they can move to, to Italy. But then um, in 2020, when they played uh, Love Song, how the crew is, sorry, because I have a poster here in my, in my world, the Love Song uh, lyrics uh, with the signature of the band, I was trying, you know, I, I spent 45 years. It was minutes emotional. In the band. Yes, back number 13, I was trying for 45 minutes. I couldn't stop. <laughs> no station. Yeah. Then the, the day after, we were having the breakfast with uh, with uh, Frankie um, uh, Frankie Hanno from, from Tesla, guitar player. Uh, so we were sitting at the same table. So this is the meta cruise, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. A cappuccino, you know, <laughs> uh, the ash. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is mine, of course, because you, you have to travel you know, the other way of the part of the ocean. You get the cruise, but of course, I, I need to go also the next year. Yeah. I need to have a mission in my life to see a lot of concerts, right? It's a good mission. It's an important one. Exactly. <laughs> no, I cannot buy a but going to concerts. Yeah. But let's now have uh, my jar of uh, random topics. We are going uh -huh. to take two topics and I will ask you things about those topics. But let's see what All you right. are getting as first. So the first one we have uh, paranormal. So do you believe in paranormal activities? Mm. Actually, I'm a bit skeptic, you know. The, the, I'm fascinated about uh, Mars. Now we are conquering, okay, Moon was already conquered, but now we are going to, to Mars. Yeah. Of course, I'm, I'm, it's, it's something bigger than us, you know. So yeah. if I'm stopping to think about it, um, you know, I love m mathematics, I love numbers. So something that I, I couldn't understand, I, I, I'm more, you know, capable in listening to prog metal, for example, or to playing drums, air drums. I have a small drum up there. Maybe you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I can play that, the drum. It's easier for me than thinking about what is, uh, if there are other, other I don't know, uh, aliens or uh, at the world, uh, the planets. Uh, yeah. If there are paranormal also here in uh, in our ghosts, so I, <laughs> yeah, I prefer not to think about it. Um, even because I'm a bit skeptic, as I told you, yeah, uh, I have to tap things and to understand that they are real, you know. Yeah, but of course, I affect everybody. Yeah, so, so you 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 if, are you need the evidence based researchers that yeah. tell you, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. Sorry. <laughs> no, you don't have to have to have sorry. I have those. I have those uh, argument. Those. Uh, I, the, yeah, those yeah, yeah. Because no, I think that it's fun to see what it. people say. Maybe, maybe I can learn something from people. <laughs> and the other know, people can. It's also because I think we are living in Italy. You know, so uh, you are used to to have a lot of teeth, a lot of stupid people that is trying to. True. to make money from yourself so uh, maybe also for this reason we, we don't trust in people 
at the beginning, you know. We are a bit skeptic and we are starting yeah. to do questions you know, because we are so, you know, it, too many people that are, are doing stupid things in Italy. So, True. Um, good for us. Yeah. There is also the rest of the world that yeah. is not. <laughs> so, you don't have just to face <laughs> Italians. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know better than me. They are stopping uh, in the street. Hey, guy, I am from this organization, helping people. Can you give me money? And then they run out with your money. So, it's, it's, I, I love to do also to give money to, to people, to poor people. But I prefer to do it per- directly, you know, personally. Yeah. Not yeah. through because I, you can't I'm trust agree. people. I'm so, I'm so I'm so sorry, but Italy is made like this. Maybe maybe we change. Maybe one day, debate. let's hope. Who knows? Yeah, Maybe but let's let's get another topic. Let's see what we are All getting. Right. I hope but to give you a better uh, reply than before. Let's see. And we have cars. So, <laughs> are you a car person? Uh, because I remember actually, you I have a scooter, you are using the scooter. Exactly. Trieste so is a small town, so you can be to a point A to B in six minutes. Actually, I'm going to my job in six minutes every day, you know, uh, including washing my teeth and uh, getting a T-shirt. Six minutes from the bed, I'm going to, to my office. <laughs> so I, I, I think also I will buy a Harley Davidson where we be retired. Uh, also because, uh, as I told you, we, we went to München that time with this car of $500, but then when we, we came back, it was kaput, it was completely destroyed. <laughs> so Poor I, car. I, 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 yes, of course. It, it wasn't prepared to, to a metal festival up on the north. And it was back. too much. Too much for her, exactly. Second hand, you know. So maybe also for this reason, uh, I don't want to invest money into fancy cars uh, because I don't think that I can use it so much. Of course, I'm a Ferrari lover, as all the Italians. I see the Formula One, uh, GP, you know, but... Um, but you are not into buying cars. Uh, yeah, I then I told also to my wife, don't ask me anything about motor, how to change uh, things. I'm not the man. You are the man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah. <laughs> but also yeah. Because, you know, I'm, I'm working in an accountant department. I'm replying to email and making calculation numbers, and email, CDs, computers, blah, 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 music. Because, of course, I have a lot of music in my office. So people who is working with me are listening to music every day, to real music, the metal yeah. music. So you are educating so, your co-workers. Yeah, my hands are clean, you see. So <laughs> I don't want to put those on black stuff and oil and other stuff. So, sorry, I'm really a pussy man for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone has different uh, talents, uh, so... I also I think yeah, I think that uh, I could just do more the the major uh, trying. I will try <laughs> to repair something, but probably I will do worst. So yeah. you know, I, it's, I have good friends of mine. They also they they are doing the sponsor to the rock camp, so they are mechanic. So I bring them. I give them money. It's easy. Take it. Do it. Do it you I know can, how to do. Yeah, yeah, I can do some stupid. Uh, the radio program, but don't ask me to repair cars, please. Yeah. <laughs> to everyone, it's thing. But exactly. let's go and talk uh, about the most important thing of uh, this podcast, talk show, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> pizza. You love pizza. Yeah. yeah, of course. Every Wednesday. Before Every... going to Rock On, okay. there is the, the pizza day. It's the pizza day. Rocon is yes, the pizza day. Perfect. <laughs> What's before your Rocon, before because our program is starting nine o'clock in the evening, uh, so I have just one, one hour time, and during this time I'm drinking, having few beers, and having having pizza. Yeah, it sounds perfect. 
<laughs> but uh, uh, what is uh, what is your favorite pizza? Ooh, uh, in the ages, so I also change a lot of times. Uh, I think right now I love the white pizza, so it means okay. without the tomato tomato sauce. Because I am a cheese lover, I love gorgonzola, I love mozzarella, mozzarella di bufala, four, five cheese. So I think cheese on top, and then uh, if you want to add uh, spinach or aubergines, some vegetables. Yeah. That's all. Okay. The parma ham. That's all. Yeah. So nothing. Uh, I, I, I ate. People who put a lot of things on top, marmalade, uh, meat, uh, roast beef, uh, fish, uh, yeah. coffee, even because my stomach cannot accept uh, uh, hot stuff uh, and uh, also other stuff. So every time they told me, hey, do you want uh, some curry? I'm starting to sing, curry, curry. <laughs> if it's the song, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can accept in my life, all right? So, for this matter, it's very, very difficult for me whenever I am outside the Italy, because for drinks, of course, you can find beers, whiskey, and gin tonic everywhere. But good food, it's a mission. Every time, it's <laughs> big, big problems. So, um, actually, especially at the festival, for example, Sweden Rock Festival, I'm going there and say, hey, first of all, you remove immediately the pineapple, the ananas go away from my pizza, then remove yogurt, you remove everything on top, you leave the cheese. If you want to put some few mushrooms or ham, that's all, please. Remove everything. <laughs> this so, the, this is a, a thing that I don't need to ask you about uh, the question if ananas, be, pineapple belong to, to pizza. Yesterday, uh, <laughs> I interviewed a band. I, uh -huh. Here in Pori, there was a new festival. Um, there was six band playing and uh, I, was, I was there taking photos and... Uh, I did three interviews for the offering website, yeah. and uh, then I intro yeah. of course I introduce uh, my metal pizza, my project to people yeah. because I have to, and asking inviting them as guests at some point, and um, a, a band that is called Where's My Bible. Uh, then I was can I can I can I uh, take a video when I ask if. Uh, Pineapple belong to pizza, and you give me the answer. And it was beautiful because they, the guys were, yeah, let's do it. And uh, there was this wall with the Ninja Turtles on the back, uh, and they were, let's do the the, the the video there. So we did the video, and uh, they all say that yes, Pineapple belong to pizza. <laughs> but so far, so far, Metal Pizza got uh, uh, just one yes for pineapple on pizza ah. everybody else said no <laughs> ah. so but the no is winning interview, maybe you have to interview more people from the north i don't know yeah don't so, so so far uh, i'm thinking that uh, just uh, the stamina's bassist uh, say <laughs> yes so all right. F Finnish people say yes, except the interview that came out today. Uh, she's Finnish but lives in Italy. She said no. <laughs> ah, good. So you it's know, it's a it's okay. tricky. It's tricky with this pineapple thing. <laughs> we are we are living in a free world, so of course you can do and you can eat whatever you want. Also, but not on my pizza. <laughs> no, uh, please. Uh, Call it differently. Call it kebab. <laughs> <laughs> so Italians cannot be offended about that. You know? <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. Come on. Yeah. Insects on your pizza, but please don't show to me because I'm a pussy. I told you. <laughs> you are going to cry. <laughs> of course. Oh, do I, you I know that there is a there is this German band. That name is uh, Samurai Pizza Cat, 
and uh, they did a <laughs> song uh, that name is Pizza Homicide. Uh, I suggest you to watch the video. It's so funny. Mm. And they say Pinay Polo on a pizza makes me cry. <laughs> it's 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 so funny and uh, maybe this metal pizza project is something that also start listening to that song. There, there is some connection and I hope to have them yeah. as guests at some point. <laughs> I was so curious about this program. I really love it. So oh, thank I really, really kiss kiss Christina and oh all the best the program because it's so funny. And of course, I will also give you a few contacts from. I love it. I, I love. I love it. <laughs> so okay. also have their their point of view, not just mine. And uh, because you know, in Italy we are. So such sophisticated when whenever you are talking about food, for yeah. us is a religion. Like if metal, auto food is a religion. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but yeah, we have done with this interview. So thank you so much. It was it was so nice to talk with you and to <laughs> laugh with you. <laughs> of course, uh, I really hope to come to to Finland. Because uh, I I forgot completely how to order a beer. How you call beer? Olut. Olut, uh, right? So I need to come there. It means that uh, there are a few festival or concerts that I like. So I need I need to come. Yeah. I, I went. There. I'll I wait for really, you. Really... <laughs> then we can eat a right. pizza together and judge if the pizza was good or not. All right, if you think so, but. I, if I come down, is uh, up, sorry, not down, but up uh, is uh, for music, special for music and alcohol, not for food. But you know, we can have. A pizza. <laughs> but we can we can have a beer and a pizza, or a few yeah, beer think, and a pizza. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, deal, deal. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, Christina, you remember how we say at the end of everything? Rock on! Rock on! Yeah. <laughs>